Hey everybody, if you have an XR series mixer and you've been wondering what the difference is between scenes and presets and snapshots, well, I'm gonna explain that to you right now. Let's go! So for this video, I'm going to be using the Behringer XR Edit software to show you how everything works. Because these are kind of basic mixer functionalities, I'm assuming that you're new to the mixer. If I'm wrong, my apologies, I don't mean to offend, but I'm going to assume that we're working from a point of the beginning. And so to do that, I'm going to use the XR Edit software, which I think is the software you should start with. If you're using something like Mixing Station, I will cover that in a different video, but not in this one. Today, we are using XR Edit software only. If you need that software, you're gonna to come to Behringer.com to downloads. You're gonna to go to Mixers, digital stage box mixers, all choose your XR18, choose software, and then choose either Windows or Mac to get the software you need. Now I'm using it on PC, but if you're following along on a Mac, the software is identical. So it doesn't matter which OS you're looking at. If you need to do this on a tablet, I'm not going to really cover tablets here. I, I will mention them briefly because there are some differences and things you can and can't do depending on what you're using but i'm not going to show a full demonstration of how to do this with the tablet in this video okay in this software there's a couple of different ways that you can save information the first way is under this little save button you can save a scene you can save a channel preset and then the other way is to come over to snapshot and it opens up a window where you can save a whole bunch of parameters so the first thing we're going to talk about is save scene. What that means is it's going to save a scene of everything that is happening on the mixer. So let's make some changes real quick. Uh, do that and we're going to turn the gain up and we're going to add some bus sends here and some effects sends. Same thing over here. We're going to do some panning. Let's turn on an EQ here, make some changes. Oops. Uh, Let's go here and we'll call this Trump oop, trumpet. Let's change it to red. Let's call this drum, change it to green. Uh, let's call this one mic and change it to pink. Okay, so we've made some changes. We've sent some stuff to buses. Let's send a couple more here just so we can see other stuff happen. Not much going to effects. Let's send some more. Cool. So we see a bunch of stuff happening here. So this is this is a scene. Basically, we've created a scene. So now if I come to save and I do save as scene, I'm going to scroll down and pick the scene one I already have and overwrite it. Yes. So I've saved this now to my computer. I have not saved it to the mixer. I've saved it to my computer that I'm currently working on. And what does that let me do now? Well, as long as I have this computer connected to this XR mixer or any other XR mixer, I could now reload the scene information. So I'm gonna go back and initialize the console. So we are looking at a blank console and now I'm going to come to load and I'm going to do load scene, find the one we just saved and boom, everything I did is back. You can see stuff is being sent to effects. It's being sent to buses. Our names are the same. Our gain settings the same. Cool. So that lets us save stuff on this computer and use this computer to pull it up on any XR mixer that we're going to use. So that means if I say did this on a laptop, maybe it's my laptop that I take to every show and I have settings that I want at every show. I can save a scene and then it doesn't matter what mixer I'm connected to, I can load these same parameters, awesome, using this computer and any mixer. So that's step one. That's, that's the first way you can save and recall something. So the other thing we can do Let's initialize again. So we're looking at a zeroed out console. And the next thing we can do is actually save a channel preset. So this is not a scene. It's not going to save everything we see here. It's going to save settings from a channel. So let's use channel three. No, let's use channel one and we're going to make some changes. Let's call this mic one, change it to red. Let's change some gain. Let's uh, flip the polarity, turn on phantom power, 
Let's add some more bus sends and let's add some effects again. Let's change our EQ for this one. Do that. Let's turn on the compressor. Let's turn on the gate. And so you can see all of these things here are active. We made some big changes and let's also raise the fader. So now I can come and save as a channel preset. Let's call it mic one channel. I've already got one, I'm just overwriting it. So yes, we've saved this. What this lets us do is the same thing as the scene preset. It allows us to recall this specific information from this specific computer regardless of what XR mixer we're attached to. Again, we're saving it to the device, the device being our computer, we are not saving it to the mixer. So let's just look at it work. I'm going to initialize. And now I'm going to choose my channel one and I'm going to load channel preset. Let's find it, there it is. And look, everything came back. Well, not quite, not everything. Our phantom power didn't come back and our gain settings didn't come back. So just be aware of that. If you have a very particular gain setting or um, a phantom power setting that you need to recall, just make note of that for yourself because they will not come back using a channel preset. It's a safety. So the other thing this lets us do is not just recall this same channel. I can take these settings if they're really good and I can apply them to any other channel I have here on the mixer. So let's choose nine, load, load channel preset, do the same thing and look, everything is exactly the same. We're not using the same physical input, we can, but it just recalls everything else. If we wanted to use the same physical input, we'd come up, select our channel, come up to input, and then change that to one. If I wanted to duplicate what's happening with the first physical input or use it for another send or something completely different, I could do that, but that doesn't get saved as part of the file. Let's just change that back to nine. So that's how to save a scene and save a preset. Remember, it saves it to the computer or to the tablet that you're using, it does not save it to the mixer. It's the assumption that you are going to use this particular computer or tablet to move around from device to device. And by device to device, I mean mixer to mixer. I just wanna be clear. I'm gonna take this device, which is the computer or tablet, and move it around to different mixers. But I always have my settings in this machine. Now, the other thing we can do is save a snapshot. So a snapshot is the same kind of thing as saving a scene, but you have more parameters that you can choose here what to do with. And this time it saves it to the mixer. So what that means is you can take this mixer now anywhere you want, and it will have those settings saved inside it. And then you can attach it to any computer or tablet you want and have those settings available to you no matter which device you're using to connect to the mixer. So that's the difference. Scenes and presets are saved to the computer or tablet. Snapshots are saved to the mixer. So let's just watch this, watch this happen. Let's make some additional changes here. Let's change this to pink and change this to yellow and change this to white. Uh, make another change here. Six. Let's change some input stuff on six. Let's phantom polarity. And actually we're gonna stereo link this one. So it's now linked with five. So that changed the color there. That's fine. Let's change that one to white. Great. We've got a whole bunch of other stuff happening here now that we can see saved and recalled. Let's, uh, let's do phantom and polarity here. So great, we can see some stuff highlighted. We're gonna come into snapshot and we're gonna save this, uh, let's call the, I'm gonna pick a blank one here and we're gonna call this, oops, test snapshot, click save, and there it is, test snapshot. So now let's initialize our mixer and let's go into snapshots again and let's load this test snapshot, boom. It loaded everything. This time it held our phantom power and it would have held gain too if we had 
change that because it's saving it to the mixer. So the assumption is that you actually genuinely want these saved and recalled right away, no matter which device you are connecting to this mixer from. So real quick, let's open up Snapshot again and let's talk about these selections over here. What this is, is it's telling the mixer that when you load a particular snapshot, you do or do not want these particular items to be recalled. So for example, we have our test snapshot. I'm going to load something different. I'm going to load this L snapshot. Okay. I've loaded this L snapshot. Um, let's say I really, really like what's happening with this kick in this snare bottom here on the L, but I want everything else for my test snapshot. So I'm going to go to my test and I'm going to deselect channel one and two. So what this is going to do is it's going to load everything from test snapshot except one and two. And that means that anything that is currently loaded on one and two will still be there when we load this test snapshot. Let's watch it happen. There you go. I've got kick and snare from the L but everything else from the test snapshot. Let's just go back in there real quick. What if I did want this? Did I overwrite what I had in test snapshot? I did not. So now if I select this and reload test snapshot, my initial settings come back from those two channels. Pretty awesome. So anything that you deselect in this window will not show up on the snapshot you have deselected it for. So look, I have test snapshot highlighted. If I turn these three off, but then pick another one, they come back. So I can have different things chosen for different snapshots here. If I know I always wanna load this one without the first three, maybe I know I always wanna load this one without four, five, six, you can do that. And the same is true for any settings here. So you need to just play around with these settings and figure out exactly how they're going to affect you as you save and load stuff. And finally, let's talk about sharing. What if we've created either a scene or a channel preset or a snapshot? Is there a way to share these things? Do we need to share these things? How does that work? Well, remember, scene and preset, uh, channel preset are saved to the computer or tablet that you are creating them on. If you wanted to share those, you can, but really only between computer to computer. So between PC and Mac or Mac and PC, very easy to do. All you do is make note of where you saved those scenes or channel presets. So mine is happens to be here under documents. Yours could be somewhere else, but then you take that file and you can email it to yourself or you could upload it to something like Google Drive. Then you could open up another computer and load that file into Xair edit software. Unfortunately, with tablets, it doesn't let you load external files, so you don't really have that option. And that's true of both the iOS app and the Android app. If you really needed to do that, what you would have to do is load your scene or channel preset, then save it as a snapshot, and then use your tablet to connect to the same mixer, load up that snapshot, and then save it as either a scene or a preset on the tablet. It's kind of a roundabout way of doing things, but let's say you had a computer and a tablet with you and you, you were working on this one mixer and you knew you wanted to take some of those settings on your tablet to use somewhere else, that's how you would have to do it. A bit unfortunate, but it's the way it is. So sharing scenes and presets from computer to computer, no problem, easily done. Sharing from computer to tablet, can't really do it. You have to work around it by saving it as a snapshot and loading it into the device that you want as a scene or preset. Snapshots, you don't really have to share it if this is the mixer you're always going to use it on. And if it's not the mixer you're going to use it on, well, then you could save it as a scene. And that way you could take it with you on the device that you're using. That's really how you share things when it's a snapshot. You just load the snapshot while you're connected to it with your device, save everything as a scene, and then take it with you on your device when you leave. And then you can load it onto any other mixer you happen to work on. And then if you need to save it as a snapshot on that mixer, you can. And really quickly before we wrap up, I want to point out these buttons here. So it tells you right here what snapshot you're loaded into. And this back button and forward button will literally jump you 
to the, the previous or the next snapshot. So if I click this, it's gonna load me into 15, and then I hit go to actually load it. There's nothing there, so nothing's going to happen. But if I find one where there is something and then hit go, boom, it loads that snapshot. So if you are maybe mixing multiple bands in a night and you have them saved on different snapshots, as you're coming to the end of band one, you could quickly jump over to any other snapshot you have. So let's stay with our test snapshot. And as soon as you are ready to switch to that band, it can just sit and wait and then hit go. And now you're ready for that second band. Now this snapshot button will not be visible if you are not actually connected to a mixer with your device. So if I come in here and I disconnect, you can see I've lost snapshot, I've lost the previous, the next and the go buttons, and I've also lost the readout of what snapshot I'm actually in. And that's because snapshots, again, are stored in the mixer. So if you're not connected to an actual mixer, you won't have those readouts because there's nothing to find, there's nothing to read. That's just a, a key piece of information that I see people stumble over all the time when they're new to this software. They can't understand why they're seeing those buttons and that readout on other people's videos or in documentation, but they don't see it on theirs. Well, if they're not actually connected, there's nothing to see. So that's it. Now you know how to save a scene, you know how to save a channel preset, you know how to save a snapshot, and you know how to recall all those things with different parameters. Awesome. I hope this video was interesting entertaining, educational, and if it was any of those three things, please like, share, and subscribe. You can check us out on Patreon, or you can join the channel down below, or even do a super thanks down below if anything we've done here is useful to you. Thanks to everybody who's already done that. And until we see you next time, thanks for watching here on Cookies. Bye, everybody.